What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Rudy's Rants from Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Show Mott. And I got another one for you today because it's unbelievable how people can sit here and make sure to keep themselves relevant, even though they are irrelevant in today's world. And the jealousy continues and continues and continues. Cheryl Soups is at it again. Like, it's this is unreal to me. Cheryl Soups is at it again. Holy freaking hell. Caitlin Clark lives rent-free in that woman's brain, in her mind. She's already started off earlier this year with stupid comments about Caitlin Clark. False comments about Caitlin Clark. And now the newest comment about Caitlin Clark. But before we jump into that, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for following. Please be sure to subscribe, like, and hit that bell so you get the most up-to-the-date content when we drop it. But Cheryl Soups. People are going to forget that Cheryl Soups was actually a basketball player. Because she played so long ago, and all she does is sit on different podcasts, spewing venom towards Caitlin Clark. <clears throat> Despite the fact that right before the All-Star game, she said that Caitlin Clark would be one of her starters on the All-Star team. You can't take anything this woman says seriously. Her credibility, her integrity, they don't exist. So now she's saying on her own podcast, Queens of the Court, I will give you your credit, Cheryl, Queens of the Court podcast. Folks, you don't believe me? Go check out her podcast. It's called Queens of the Courts. She shares her take on the league's rookie of the year debate between Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. And her comments go like this. I think Caitlin has done, I think, exactly what was expected of her with Indiana. The reason why they drafted her, what the expectations were, and I think she's done just that, Swoops said. Okay. However, Swoops also said, is Indiana in the playoffs right now without Caitlin? When you look at the overall team, like the pieces that they have, without question, Indiana has better players than Chicago from top to bottom. No doubt about it, Swoops added. Given, <laughs> I can't even, like this is painful. She also said that Katie Lou Samuelson was more valuable to the Indiana Fever than Caitlin Clark. I, 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 you can't make this shit up. But let's jump in. Angel Reese plays for Chicago. Chicago had two of the top seven picks in the draft. Angel Reese was not the third pick. That was Camila Cardoso. Camila Cardoso's game has struggled playing next to Angel Reese. I think we all see that. In fact, it's been sacrificed for Angel Reese. But my goodness, I, 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 you think that ain't that, that Caitlin Clark is doing exactly what was expected of her, yet you had her as a starter on your all-star team, if you were the coach, and you didn't have Angel Reese. So if Victor Wimbanyama did exactly what was expected of him, should he have not won Rookie of the Year? If LeBron James had not had done did it did what was expected of him, which is what he did as a rookie, should he not win Rookie of the Year? That is the stance that Cheryl Soups is taking. That if you do what's expected of you, what people think you're going to do, therefore. 
You should not win the award because someone else did something that they didn't expect them to do. It doesn't mean that they're better. It doesn't mean that they had a better season. It just means that because they did something that wasn't expected, therefore, Angel Reese should be Rookie of the Year because she did what was unexpected. And I say I agree with her. She has done what was unexpected. I didn't expect her to have the season she's had, and she's been surprisingly good. But that doesn't mean she's better. That doesn't mean she's having a better season. You can take your double doubles and flush them down the toilet. I don't care anymore. I'm sick of hearing about them. That that padded up streak. That padded streak is like tissue in a woman's bra. It's fake. But Caitlin Clark's triple double wasn't fake. Caitlin Clark's 19 assists weren't fake. Caitlin Clark leading the WNBA in assists right now is not fake. By the way, Angel Reese no longer leads the league in rebounds. She may by the end of the year, but she felt second behind Asia Wilson. I mean, you think that the Indiana Fever would be in the playoffs without Caitlin Clark? Are you on drugs? What are you smoking? The Indiana Fever were 13 and 27 last year. They were not in the playoffs. They are four games ahead of their pace from last season. At this same time. And that includes starting off one and eight. Because the WNBA stuck them in a fucking gauntlet to start the season off. Playing 11 games in 20 nights. Against the best teams in the league. Because they're trying to maximize the attention of Caitlin Clark. But you cannot be serious anymore. Like, what is the credibility here? You think Indiana will be in the playoffs without Caitlin Clark? Have you been watching? One win by more than like eight. Let's go look. Since I'm here, I might as well look. Most of their wins are close wins. Even the blowout that they had. So the, the blowout they should have had versus uh, Phoenix ended up being a four-point game with two minutes to go. What, what is... Holy cow. Indiana is 11 and 15. They have wins by seven, by nine, by five, by six, by 12, by seven. By eight, by seven, by two, by one, by five. They have their largest win is a 12 point win over the Atlanta Dream. They don't win by wide margins. They need everything that Caitlin Clark has given to them. I'm sorry to let you know, Cheryl, but if it wasn't for Caitlin Clark, the Indiana Fever would end the season with five wins. This team sucks without her. They're, in, they're, they're incapable of playing basketball without her. Have you been watching? They have an incompetent head coach. Their defense is atrocious. And you think they would win games without her? They can't even get the ball past half court without her. They can't score without her. The offense does not work without her. And you're going to tell me that they'd be in the playoffs without her? Here's what I know would happen. Kelsey Mitchell would average 20 a game. Aaliyah Boss would average 15 and 10. And nobody else would do shit. And they would suck. As they were a 13 and 2017 last year. So no. They would not be a playoff team without her. And in fact, Chicago, if you want to be real about it, Angel Reese is not their best player. Kennedy Carter is. Kennedy Carter is the best player for the Chicago Sky. And it's not close. 
Angel Reese might be the motor, but the best player is Kennedy Carter. And Kennedy Carter, the first five, six games of the year, started off the season off the bench. And since she's been a starter, has been otherworldly dominant. She's impossible to guard. She's too fast for literally every guard in the league. The only problem with Kennedy Carter is keeping her head here. And the fact that she really can't shoot from the perimeter. But mid-range in, you can't stop her. She is the best player for the Chicago Sky, and she would be the second best player on the Indiana Fever right now. Marina Mabry, who got traded, would be a starter for Indiana. Daniela Cardoso would be a starter for Indiana. Fuck, Angel Reese would be a starter for Indiana. I can legitimately tell you right now, Taylor Clark, Kennedy Carter, Camila Cardoso, Angel Reese, and Leah Boston would start as a starting five for Indiana if they were on the same team. And if you want, you could probably flip Marina Mabry in there for, for, for uh, Cardoso. Or Reese, whichever one. But she's not on the team anymore, so I take her off that list, obviously. The bigs, all of the bigs for Chicago would start in Indiana, except over Aaliyah Boston. You take any one of them, Reese, Cardoso, who's their, who's their other one? Is it, what's that other girl's name? What's that other girl's name? I know who I'm thinking of. I'm trying to think of her name. Uh, roster. <laughs> Isabel Harrison. Izzy Harrison. Izzy Harrison would start for Indiana. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? The backups for Chicago would come off the bench before the backups for Indiana. Are you crazy? Lexi Hall wouldn't play in Chicago. Erica Wood wouldn't get on the floor in Chicago. These are the backups. They would not get on the court. Are you going to sit here and tell me that India India has a better roster than Chicago? Get the fuck out of here, Cheryl. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. You don't watch basketball, clearly. Maybe old age is giving you dementia or something because I don't know what the hell is going on that you could possibly think that Chicago doesn't have a better roster than Indiana. Fine, let's hit this last one. Eddie Samuelson is more valuable than Caitlin Clark? Oh God! Like, what do you say? Are you dr- are you what? What drug are you on? What are you on? Daniel Sanderson, whose job is to hit shoot threes, and she can't make threes. Why don't we shot? She don't just play three free points per game. She's shooting like thirty four percent from three, and she's always wide open. What the fuck, man? This is, em- this is embarrassing. This is embarrassing. You can't. I, I, oh, goodness. What in the world? I. Uh, Cheryl Swoops. I, I, I give up. I've given up on Cheryl Swoops. Cheryl Swoops has shown her face over and over and over again. You know what? There's a saying. You know, if, if, if you're done, if, like I know this, but if you're dumb, keep your mouth shut because if you open your mouth, you can prove everyone's correct that you think you're dumb. Well, Cheryl Soups pr- proves everyone. She she confirms that she's a dumbass. She confirms that she's a complete buffoon. She confirms that she has no flipping idea what she's talking about, and she confirms that she literally cannot stand Caitlin Clark, even after she said that Caitlin Clark would be a starter on her All Star team ahead of Angel Reese, the same person she just said. Would be the fucking rookie of the year. Taylor Clark will be a top five vote getter for MVP, you fucking buffoon. MVP. She will get the, she'll be in the top five. Angel Reese will not. Promise you that. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. And it's embarrassing that you're running this fucking narrative. Tell you Sanderson was more valuable to the Indiana Fever than Caitlin Clark. Are you nuts? I will say this. Neither team would be in the playoffs without 
Fort or Reese. They would both be watching from their couches when the playoffs start. But sitting here telling us that because someone has done what they were expected to do and saying that that's not good enough to win rookie of the year because someone else did something that was unexpected of them, even though it's still not better than what the other person has done, is a joke. You're a clown. I've had enough of it. Enough already, Cheryl. Shut the fuck up. Go off into the pasture and go to a convalescent home. Retire somewhere because your voice is a joke. You, you, you're embarrassing yourself every time you speak. And it's painful. It's fucking painful. But that's all I got. Let me know what you think. Because I'm fucking pissed off. Because I cannot stand listening to this bullshit anymore. It's become a joke. It's become an absolute joke. From these idiots on the Olympic Committee. My God. They're all. They're all together. The, the land of moron. As I used to call it. The Caitlin Clark hate brigade. That's all I got. Leave a comment, ring that bell, and share this video. Come on now.